Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, the intolerance of ANC members here today against opposition party members who try to express a different view to their own highlights the desperation in the ANC. And we can't blame them, can we? They are desperate. They've seen how many councillors they lost in August last year, how many of their friends lost their jobs, and they're counting the days to the 2019 election when they're going to lose their jobs as well. But what you have shown to the voters is how vulnerable you are as a party. The once mighty ANC is now a weak, scared lamb fighting for its survival. And I, don't, I also don't blame you, um, given the history of the State of the Nations Address. You know that the radical economic transformation plan that the President has outlined is going to go nowhere. If we look, if we look at 2011, the theme was the year of job creation through transformation and economic growth. Thank goodness the voters didn't hold their breath. That's all I can say. Because we would have had a lot less voters in the country. The Minister of Communication says we cannot continue with only a few benefiting from the economy. And you're quite right, sir. We cannot continue with a few benefiting from the economy. So why then do you allow the Zupta cartel to continue to pillage and loot the coffers of this country? Why don't you take a stand for the silent or the voiceless millions in this country? You allow one man to continue to pillage this country. Uh, Deputy Chair, on Thursday night, South Africans were appalled at the visuals they saw here in Parliament, where they saw armed military personnel on the precinct of this uh, August House. When the leader of the opposition and the chief whip of the opposition brought this matter to the Speaker's attention, the Speaker should have immediately suspended the proceedings in order to address this grave situation. The fact that she didn't see, even seem alarmed or even raise her eyebrow um, at the thought of armed troops on the precinct indicates that she either gave her authority for their presence beforehand or knew about their presence beforehand. And this is despite the fact that both the chairperson of the NCOP and the Speaker of the National Assembly gave assurances to the whips of the different parties that only ceremonial military uh, personnel would be allowed within the precincts of Parliament. The failure of the Speaker to address this gross violation of our Constitution will remain a stain on our democracy and ensure that her name stenches the history books for centuries to come. Professor George Devonish wrote in the Star on Tuesday, the 14th of February, and I want to quote him. He said, making use of military troops in the precincts of parliament puts two issues at stake. First, the conduct would appear to be a violation of the principle of the separation of powers, and the second, that of a breach of parliamentary privilege, both of which are part of our constitutional dispensation. The chief function of the speaker is to preserve the privileges and dignity of parliament in uh, chairing political debate and discourse. <clears throat> this must be done with impartiality and courage. For this to occur, the speaker must be politically independent. Unfortunately, Baleka Mbeta is compromised in that she is also the ANC chairperson. He continues to say it is with uh, regards to fearless independence that Mbeta, and I'm quoting, and other presiding officers have failed through their blatant knee partiality to the ANC. That's what he says. Then, so, so Madam Speaker allowed to happen on Thursday night was ten, what she allowed to happen was tantamount to a coup here on, th on Thursday night. And if she and the other presiding office, officers do not to. get the severity okay. of the situation, it is more reason that they all should step down as their position. your point of order? Um, Deputy Chair, we also witnessed uh, today and yesterday how ANC members are aided and abetted by the presiding officers to insult and abuse members of the opposition. Rules are selectively applied by the presiding officers. How is it, uh, Deputy Chair, that ANC members can tell members to F off and nothing happens? In fact, it, it was a uh, Premier sitting here on Thursday night. How is it that uh, Honourable uh, Dick, I think his name is, could tell the Honourable Van Damme that she was, she's a street mate? and nothing is taken, no action is taken against him. How is it that the Honorable Manana can say 
to a DA member that they are a sellout and no action is taken against them, yet they are named and pointed out to the presiding officer. Well, Honourable Manana, let me tell you what I believe is a sellout. A party that allows 94 mentally ill people to die through starvation and, and uh, dehydration, that party is a sellout. A party that allows the massacre of 44 miners in Marikana is a sellout. <clears throat> A party who allows 9 million South Africans to be unemployed is a sell-out. A party who allows a president to spend 246 million rand on his house is a sell-out. A party who allows a president to get away with 783 charges of corruption is a sell-out. A party who allows 19,500 dysfunctional schools is a sell-out. Yeah. Deputy Chair, the Honourable Zulu said that the ANC have replaced AK-47s for the Constitution. But what she didn't say is how the party is trampling on the Constitution, violating it and ripping it up at every possible turn. That's what you're doing currently. <clears throat> It's about time that you stood up for the Constitution and not stood on it. You also said that we should limit to uh, how we push the ANC. Now, for me, that is a direct threat from, from Honorable Zulu. <clears throat> but let me tell you, Honorable Zulu, we're not scared of your threats. We are going to keep pushing the ANC or and speaker. hold you to account for service delivery. Can you continue, Honorable Member? Um, thank you. I want to give the assurance to Honourable Zulu and other members of the ANC, we're not going to be scared to keep pushing, like we pushed you out of Nelson Mandela Bay, like we pushed you out of Johannesburg, and like we pushed you out of Twane. So, so just, and we're going to push you out of the union buildings as well. <clears throat> the ANC said they could never lose Nelson Mandela Bay, and they did. They said they could never lose Twane, and they did. They said they could never lose Johannesburg, and they did. Let us stand here in 2019 and say, the ANC said they couldn't lose in 2019, and Honourable they your did. Time has expired. Thank you. I think